Hi guys, Archie Luxury, Archie Luxury channel, Paul Pluto channel. And today, fuckers, I want to talk about, I want to talk about buyer's remorse. Buyer's remorse. And before I do that, remember, like, subscribe, and tell your fuckhead friends about my channel. And don't forget, don't forget, please look in the description for 10 ways you can keep me full time on YouTube. And today I wanted to talk about buyer's remorse. Now, yesterday I made the video about my IWC. This is the Ingenua, the 3227-01. And I was saying that I think I've, I've been stung with buyer's remorse. <coughs> and I was basically saying I wanted to bring some new blood into the channel. So I went to a brand I uh, respected but never had on the channel. And I got this beautiful IWC Ingenua. And this is a piece that, as I told in my story, I go back a long way. Many years ago, in 2002, I was working for a watch dealer in Bangkok. And he gave me an IWC uh, golf club. <clears throat> Not the yacht club, the golf club to wear. And I... Really liked it. It was a black dial, integrated bracelet, general Gentra design. And I thought, hey, I want to try and get that type of um, piece back. So <clears throat> I got a, this is a uh, fairly modern, fairly modern piece. These were made uh, in the mid noughties up until 2009. And I thought, well, that's great. I'll get a IWC. I wanted an in-house movement. This has got the 80110 movement, the famous in-house, even though it's based on a Baoju 7750. It's technically got no parts interchangeable. But then I thought, you know, I would like the Ingenue. So I really put my thinking cap on and said, you know, a lot of people had said to me, what about IWC, IWC? And I really was thinking, hey, I want to do something different. So I went out and bought this. Now I paid high for it because it was a minty IWC, full bracelet, box papers, receipt, and had a recent IWC service. So it's it's a cool piece, very, very cool piece. And then I kind of had buyer's remorse. I bought it and I was hoping the fans, the followers would say, hey, Archie, well done, love the IWC. It didn't happen. I didn't get the validation I was looking for. In fact, I got a lot of criticism. And, you know, this is my first foray into really biggish, chunky, beefy sort of watches. And I really felt out of my depth. I thought, oh my God, what have I done? What have I done? And I got to tell you, I had buyer's remorse. And, uh, you know, and then I got to tell you the truth now. I kind of, I haven't exactly been swamped with inquiries. So I'm kind of hurt. The validation I wanted, the validation just really didn't come. I've had a few private emails. People have said, oh, Arch, I love the IWC. But... Not much positive comment, that's for sure. Not much positives have been said there. So I I got to tell you the truth there. The buyer's remorse, yes. Yes, I probably regret buying it. But it's not the end of the world. It is a nice piece. It's a nice piece. And it's something, you know, it is very, very different. It's a different piece. So... You know, I, I kind of, um, I wanted something different. I hadn't had IWC on the channel. And <clears throat> I like, with my small compact collection, I like to have one brand per watch. So only one Rolex. The only exception would possibly be another Patek. But I can't afford another Patek at the moment. But that's what I'm sort of saying, you know. So I, I got to tell you... Um, the, it, it really, this IWC makes my uh, Rolex Polar Explorer 2 seem like a small watch. It's a monstrosity, <coughs> a monstrosity. 
and you know it's a different genre i i wanted you know this this watch has pulled up the classic iwc problems being that it's a very expensive brand they're not cheap they're not cheap uh not the greatest bang per buck they are uh, they rely heavily on third party movements eta valju sort of movements and even the in-house one, well, the speculation came out that it's based on a Valjoux 7750 movement. So it's kind of, um, it defeats, you know, it's kind of, I, I don't know what to say there, but um, I'd like to ask the audience, should I keep it or sell it? Flick or keep? And... Uh, I've, I've had a few comments. Some people have left some, you know, some people have said to me, oh, no, get a dive watch, get a dive watch. And I will really think about that. But um, I've got to be honest there. The IWC, pop or flop? Tell me now, fuckers. Pop or flop? <coughs> the IWC, pop or flop, fuckers? Pop or flop? And... Uh, I'd like to hear from the audience. I, I didn't just race out there. I, I really put a lot of thought into it. I thought about the different IWC models, the Portuguese, the the uh, Big Crown. You know, I thought about these, and I thought, no, I I really want an Ingenua. I want an in-house. I want something that's kind of, you know, <coughs> from the 90s to the noughties, and this fit the bill, beautiful dial. It, it very much was a, um, it's it's like an AP at a Rolex price. That's kind of how the, 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 uh, the IWC genre is there. And I've read a few articles. Yes, they're, they're quite, quite a nice kind of watch here. The model after it, they went to a straight ETA type movement. So this is kind of special. Uh, I'd like to hear from the audience. Pop or flop? Pop or flop, fuckers. Pop or flop. What do you think, my IWC? Pop or flop. And uh, I'd like to hear from the audience. What do you reckon? Should I keep it? Should I sell it? What the fuck should I do with it? So uh, you tell me. I'm kind of I'm thinking, oh, maybe it's not as bad as, you know, I had the, the buyer's remorse the other day. Now I'm swinging the other way. So uh, I'd like to hear from the audience. Pop or flop. Fuckers, pop or flop, I'm Archie Luxury. Tell me what you fuckers think of that. Nice one, Archie. Good to see you trying different brands, fuckers.